Hey everybody, welcome back to Young Engineers of Today. I hope you had a um, wonderful holiday weekend. It was a good Thanksgiving and you guys did fun stuff and, um, you know, had some good quality time because we're going to be moving on to a new subject today. I mean, not really, I just hope you had a good holiday anyway. But, oh, mine was fine. Thank you for asking. I uh, went down to Charlotte uh, to visit some family. Saw Arrival, which is an excellent movie. I recommend it. Um, and, uh, you know, came back up here and worked. <laughs> so it was okay. Um, but, yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah. yeah it was, it's, it's always good to see family. Um, but yeah, so we're moving on to an entirely new subject today. You'll notice that I don't have, I mean, I have something down here at the bottom, but, um, I don't have anything up on the screen right now. And that's just because the, the presentation for it is currently ongoing. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll have more of a presentation for it, uh, in the coming lessons that, I'm going to leave a mystery. Um, I'll, I'll keep what exactly we're working on in a little bit of, uh, in a little bit of suspense for a moment here. Um, now, how many of you have been messing around with your Arduinos in lab and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, basically. Ooh. Or, uh, Nobody? Nobody, apparently. Uh, how about, no, I mean, you know, when I was talking about Arduinos and stuff like that, and I was, I was basically saying things like, that, well, you can, you can set it up so that it, it automates this thing, or it interfaces with that thing, or it does this thing that's a thing, or whatever. Um, you know, we set up those circuits and everything like that. Um, Did you ever sit there and go like, uh, you know, I wonder how I can do this, but turn it into a circuit, something that I could use? Um, in addition, yeah, so we got a couple of people there. Uh, in addition, how many of you, when we were working on the Arduinos, uh, maybe accidentally pulled out like a jumper wire or a, uh, or a component from the breadboard and just had everything shut down and have to figure out where it was supposed to go again. If you did, you're not alone because I've done that before. Just move your hand and accidentally hook like a jumper wire and just yank it out with your finger or something like that. Um, it's... To be sure, probably one of the fatal flaws of breadboard systems is their how temporary they are, um, and by extension, how easy it is to accidentally dismantle them. Um, so there are there are other solutions to that, you know, especially if you wanted something that was a little bit or definitely a lot more permanent. Um, one of those solutions involves creating your own circuit board soldering the components in and connecting everything together. I'm enjoying the suspense. Um, however, you know, making a circuit board for the longest time wasn't a very easy thing to do. Thank you. Uh, wasn't a very easy thing to do. Um, you know, it required a lot of work and you had to burn and etch stuff and, you know, you had to, to painstakingly uh, create pathways between different, you know, connections and everything. Uh, but once it was done, you had a much more uh, resilient circuit that you could use in order to create your whatever it was that you were making. You know, your smart cat feeder or whatever. Um, however, there has been there's been sort of an advent in um, where is he? Uh, he's right here. Got him hidden beneath uh, some icons. Um, 
the three that I use most often are in a diagonal line. Um, anyway, yes, there was an ad, there was sort of, sort of an advent of um, circuit board creation, uh, and it was the ability to print out your own circuit boards. That is to print out a covering so that when you're doing the etching, um, those spots won't get etched away or will get etched away with acid so that you have, you know, uh, a completed connection. Um, it greatly simplifies the construction of circuit boards um, and allows you to more easily prototype circuit boards so you don't have to painstakingly make a new circuit board every time you want to try something new. Um, and they're called, rather predictably, printed circuit boards, or PCB. PCBs, depending upon, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, printed circuit boards are actually very, 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 very useful for um, uh, being able to generate your own circuits for many, many reasons. Uh, mo not limited to uh, cost or ease of creation or, you know, um, reliability or anything like that. Like basically all of those things, all, all of those things provide, um, are, are advantages that PCBs provide. In addition, um, you can use certain softwares, certain, certain software, uh, in order to automatically generate a circuit layout, or at least with a lot of assistance generate a circuit layout, which you can then directly transfer to a PCB and have a physical circuit just that is exactly the same. Get a what you see is what you get kind of uh, quality to it. Create it on the computer and then get a physical circuit board that is exactly like that. With that in mind, that's what we're going to get started with. We're going to get started with PCB design software that will allow you to create your own PCBs. Uh, it's called Eagle. Uh, I believe it's it stands for something. Uh, easily accessible graphical something or other. Um, let me see here. Easily applicable graphical layout editor. That's what it is. That's right. Okay, I remember now. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna download Eagle and we're gonna take a look around Eagle. Um, so go ahead and go to this address in the chat box. And you're going to be taken to this site, Eagle PCB Design. PCB Design is able to meet the needs of professional engineers, makers, and students. Um, and you'll see some some examples of stuff here in Auto Router, Layout Editor, Schematic Editor, stuff like that. What we're going to do is we're going to click on Download Eagle 7.7, .7, right up in the middle, right there. And you're going to select your operating system. And you'll also need to put in your email address. So, you'll also have to agree to the license and services agreement. <laughs> Once you've done all that, though, click on download. And wait for it to do its thing. 32-bit and 64-bit refer to basically um, the size of the instructions that a computer processor can uh, basically understand and manipulate at any given moment. Um, if you're not sure which one you have, chances are you have 64-bit unless you have a, you know, five-plus-year-old computer. 
uh, even then you could have a 64 bit you know operating system you know who knows but if you have something that's newer than five years old odds are very good you're running a 64 bit operating system very very good um, and your computer will be able to run that if you want to be safe you download the 32 bit because 32 bit software will run on 64 bit computers however 64-bit software will not run on 32-bit computers. But essentially, um, the reason why it exists is because uh, a computer can take in an instruction, like a CPU can take in an instruction that basically consists of an address at memory and something to do to the stuff that's stored at that address in memory. Um, and an address is just basically the number of the memory. So you might have memory slot 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 8, 1, B, 1, C, 1, D, 1, E, 1, F, blah, 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 all the way up to F, 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 F or something. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, um, I ran into an issue where memory, you know, got larger and larger and larger. You're running, you know, uh, one gig, two gigs, four gigs, six gigs, eight gigs, uh, right at about four gigs. Um, that became too much memory for a 32-bit system to be able to use because uh, there were more spots in memory, there were more addresses in memory uh, than there were numbers that a 32-bit could hold for the address. Um, basically, you know, if you could only count up to 10 and you had 20 different addresses in memory, you run into an issue because you can't, can't go higher than 10. So suddenly half your memory is unusable because it can't be addressed. So 64-bit was uh, created so it could take advantage of uh, the greater amounts of memory that exists on computers nowadays. Uh, so now that there is enough space in the addressing system in order to be able to uh, basically reach all of those uh, spots in memory. Uh, all right, so presumably your download should be done now. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. We're going to set it up. It's a very, it's just a self-extractor, so it's a very straightforward process. It's unzipping everything. Ooh, ooh. Unzipping a whole bunch of libraries, a whole bunch of libraries. Welcome to the Eagle Setup Program. This program will install Eagle on your computer. Exciting, right? Super exciting. Let's just go ahead and go through the install process. Please read the license agreement. Um, it's always a good habit to get into reading the license agreement uh, within reason. Um, but, you know, just it's one of those things where, like, people should read the license agreement, but nobody really does uh, because a lot of it's very standard boilerplate stuff. path to a license and installation code. Well, um, you should be able to, there is a freeware version. Um, 
So, okay. If it's doing that, let's see here. You can say don't license now. Or you can use Eagle Express to run Eagle as a free version. Actually, do Eagle Express. That's probably a better choice uh, because that's the free version. And when that's done, you'll have Eagle installed on your computer. But yeah, once it gets to the point where it's asking for a path to a license and an installation code, uh, select Use Eagle Express. Because you'll want that, um, you want that. That's the free version. So let me go ahead and get Eagle open. Give everybody a minute in order to uh, in order to uh, get everything installed. Just go ahead and raise your hand once it's installed and ready to go. And opened. I just want to make sure I'm not going too fast. You don't actually necessarily have to open it. Uh, today because we're not really going to get much done on the way there. Uh, I just want to go over like the UI and everything like that so that uh, like an overview of the features and everything. All right, we got one hand up. Hey, no worries. No rush. <sighs> ah, wonderful life-giving water. Yeah, and just again, just raise your hand if you've got it all installed and everything. Okay, we got a couple of hands up now. 
wait till at least 50% uh, of the class has it uh, installed. And uh, I'll move on to the next thing. Just because, yeah, again, I mean, uh, you don't have to open it up right now. We'll walk through everything as we get started on making a board and everything. Uh, I just want to, um, I just want to go over like kind of the, the interface of Eagle and stuff like that today as a, as a primer. And I don't want to be distracting you guys from installing things or vice versa. Okay. Interesting. It probably thinks Eagle is a uh, is a malicious piece of software or something. Uh, no, that's. Uh, we'll go ahead and send that because I know it's not. A bunch of extra files under projects. Uh, is it like examples and then all this stuff here? Because those are, uh, there's, there's a bunch of stuff there. Um, yeah, Arduino tutorial. Yep, yep. Single-sided. TI Launchpad, Seed, LTS, LT Spice, Hexpod, Electro. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're basically just examples of, of stuff in, in Eagle. I'm actually, I'll go ahead and open up one of those um, just to show you guys. <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. We'll open up the schematic first and we'll full screen it. Uh, so right here we're looking at the schematic of an Arduino Mega. Um, last year actually when we did Eagle, we made an Arduino Uno. There is no Eagle file? Uh oh, interesting. Like even if you click the little arrow next to it, there's no there's no schematic and board. Interesting. Well, don't worry about it because we're never like we're not actually going to use this stuff specifically. I just want to pull it up to show you guys, uh, but you don't have to have it open. Um, you'll you'll get plenty familiar with the um, with the Eagle interface when we when we make our own thing from scratch. Uh, but as it stands right now, uh, this is this is one half of the Eagle program software. Um, this is the schematic side of things, which uh, shows you the schematic of a um, of a given electrical circuit. Uh, in this case, like I said, this is an Arduino Mega 2560. So this is this is um, a little bit more complex, just a little bit more complex than the uh, the Arduinos that you have for your SparkFun kits. Uh, this has a few more bells and whistles on it. Um, schematics are just basically diagrams that uh, electrical engineers use in order to illustrate the layout of a, of a circuit. Uh, it's important to note, however, that schematics do not show where everything is going to be physically placed on the board. They don't. That's not, uh, that's not what a schematic is for. A schematic is meant to be as readable as possible so you can see all of the connections that exist, not where they stand on a board. Um, so that's why this looks kind of weird right now. Uh, this is not what an Arduino Mega looks like. This is what an Arduino Mega looks like if we're just considering how everything is connected to everything else. Now let's take a look at this. Um, as you can see, you've got some stuff floating in different areas. Uh, you've got some stuff that's just sort of like in its own area, um, things like that. But they, they correspond to different electrical components. So you've got here like uh, capacitors and resistors and um, diodes and connections to power and ground and stuff like that. Then you've got these green wires which um, which denote connections that exist. So if we were to look at this IC1 integrated circuit 1, um, we can see that it has one connection because it's got three, four lines that come off of it that are all numbered. It's got one connection that is connected to ground 
as well as uh, another another part of the Arduino. Um, we've got one connection that's connected to uh, power, as well as a couple of diodes and another IC labeled IC2 um, or MC33269D-5.0. Uh, sounds like a star date or something. And then you got connections two and four, which are connected to a capacitor, which is further connected to a ground, which is also connected to power, and is also connected to a, another part of IC2. Um, so that's the whole point of a schematic is we can take a look at this and we can get, be like, oh, two is connected to a diode, which is connected to uh, this capacitor, which is connected to three, which is connected to power, which is connected to another capacitor, which is connected to IC2. Um, you click on Eagle Express. That's the one you want because that's the, that, that's the free version. Yeah. Um, it's also important to note that when you're reading a schematic, you'll notice we've got areas that have dots and we have areas that have no dots. If it has no dot, it means that there is no connection there. So you can think of this as like a three-dimensional thing, and this connection right here is either passing under or over this one right here. If there is a dot, it means that there is an intersection and they connect. So this area right here is connected to three. So both three and one are connected to ground. Looks like that doesn't do much, but that's okay. Things get pretty complex over here. We got a whole bunch of VCCs that are all connected to one another that all connect off to the, the five volt connection and some capacitors as well in order to normalize power draw. Uh, and then ground is connected to all the grounds. It's uh, very, very intense. Uh, we've got all these these uh, uh, PWM connections which are all connected to um, PWM uh, pins on the uh, on the Arduino board. So this is this is this big thing right here. This is the actual processor and clock for the Arduino. This is the 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 chip that exists on the board. All of this other stuff. This is showing that the chip is connected to stuff on the board. So we've got this PWM pin right here. It's connected to that pin on the chip to the pin hole on the board. So that pin hole provides PWM power thanks to you know the, the, the chip's request. We've also got this is Wait a second. Yeah. Okay. So this is a this is a processor as well. Uh, AT Mega. Yeah, it's a processor. And then AT Mega twenty five sixty is is a larger processor. Um, anyway. So that's. kind of the, the idea behind the schematic side of things. I know that doesn't really explain things terribly well, but again, you'll get much more comfortable with this as we go through it. Um, you'll be able to uh, basically just uh, modify the connections on your circuit on this side of things. Um, you can use it to add more components or modules. Um, Oh, let's see here. You can add components. It's been a while since I've used this, so bear with me. Execute scripts, run ULP, use library, tools, you draw. I believe there is a, yep, an add component button here, which allows us to be able to add components. So if we went to like resistor, Remember how there was one result for resistor? Um, we'll have to include some libraries here. Uh, 
Uh, let's include the SparkFun library. Isn't there a SparkFun library? Doesn't seem to exist here. We'll have to download that. Oh, that's something we can do as part of the tutorial as well. Let's include the Toshiba library. Toshiba fiber optic devices. So we've got various things here. Um, we'll include the 40XX CMOS logic devices. Um, so various chips that exist. And as you can see, there's just a whole bunch of options, like just a ton of them. Um, that's because it, Eagle is very, very uh, powerful. Um, it's got a lot of uh, different... See, like this is just a list of different diodes. Look how long this list is. We've got a whole bunch of different kinds of diodes that do different things, have different ratings, uh, are, are stronger or weaker, uh, you know, use different methods in order to be um, a diode. Uh, can be diodes for multiple different uh, circuits all connecting to one circuit kind of a thing. Um, diodes, there are a lot of different diodes out there, and the Eagle software does reflect that. Uh, and it can be a little overwhelming at first because there are so many different options. However, it's important to note that um, a lot of times when it comes to design software and stuff like that, with great power comes great obfuscation. Um, part of the reason why this can be so difficult to use is because there are so many options available to you and it, become, it can become overwhelming. Um, but I, I'm here to tell you right now, uh, it is it is something you'll get more comfortable with. You don't have to you don't have to worry about you know getting lost in a sea of even just trying to add a new component, getting lost in a sea of different components, and not sure which one to add. Generally, when you're at this point, you're you're much more comfortable with, um, or at least you're comfortable enough with components to know um, what you want to add in a given situation. If, you know, and for the first circuit that you guys will be making, I'll walk you guys through the process so you don't have to worry about it. Anyway, um, so you, basically the, the way this, this side works is you would add a component to the, um, to the schematic and then you would draw connections to it with the, uh, with, the, with the net function. And this allows you to draw those green wires which denote connections between different objects. By doing that, we can create connections between different components on the uh, on this Arduino circuit. Now, um, most of the stuff you'll be doing on the uh, on the schematic side is adding new components and combining them. You do have the ability to label things. So this could be whoop, and we could call this one over here whoop, and we can call this one that one, and stuff like that. So we'll be able to, you know, label different things. Um, I can also make my computer freak out, um, but that's, that's by and large what you'll be doing is you'll be is you'll be dragging out components and connecting them to one another. Now again, you'll remember that I said that this does not denote the layout of a given circuit; it just denotes the connections that exist on a given circuit. And for that, you need to, in order to do the layout, you need to utilize the other half of the Eagle CAD software. Believe it or not, there's another half to it. So we've got the schematic half, and then we've got the board half. Look at that. This corresponds to this. So we've got this made in Italy. Uh, uh, they don't really have much in the way of labels on them right now. but. Um, This big chip right here 
is this big chip right here. This smaller chip over here is this smaller chip over here. All of these pins and connectors and stuff like that, they all correspond to all of these pins and connectors that exist uh, around the periphery of the chips. Um, as you can see, you've got a 5 volt connection over here. There's a USB that exists right here. As you can see, the USB is connected to a few different things. If we go back over here, we can see that there's a USB connector. It's connected to the ground. It's connected to, you know, the, the chip. Um, so this is a more abstract representation of a circuit. This is what the printed circuit board would resemble. Um, you can just start a thing by uh, by double clicking one of these uh, things here. In order to create a new one, we'll we'll go over that on Wednesday to create a new design and get started with that. But yeah, so this actually um, this is another thing that that you that you would do as a you know a circuit designer is you would design how the individual um, tracks and stuff like that are all laid down. Track being uh, one of these lines that denotes how one thing is connected to another and where it's specifically laid out on the board. So similar to the schematic, this is denoting what's connected to, you know, uh, to what. But it's, uh, it's different from a schematic because it is telling us exactly how it's all going to be laid out on the board. Um, so that's, that's this side of the, uh, of the Eagle Cat software. Um, we use this side in order to set up the connections. We use this side in order to set up the layout. Um, now again, this looks like this is pretty complex. That's because this particular thing is, is, yeah, it's an Arduino Omega. It's a, it's a decently powerful board that does quite a few things. Um, So it's it's important to note that you know your first circuit isn't going to look like this necessarily. So don't be intimidated by uh, the complexity of this one because it's not representative of certainly your first uh, project. Um, this is like looking at um, a finished program when you're trying to learn a programming language. You got to start with like the hello world. Um, it's it, not quite. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, technically, I, I guess so. Um, in some ways it is, in some ways it is uh, not quite, but it's, it's, it's not as complex as one, I'll tell you that much. Motherboards are really intense, like really intense, because there's a lot of stuff that's going on on a motherboard. This is sort of clever in the fact that it takes a lot of stuff and it, it compresses it into a very small footprint, um, which requires a fair amount of patience and, and planning on uh, on uh, the part of the person designing it. Because here's the wacky thing about designing this stuff. Stuff can't cross. And you might be saying, oh, hey, that's not that's not true. I see stuff crossing here everywhere. But you can't cross something of the same color with itself if you don't want them to be connected. So you'll notice how all of this stuff, like all of these red wire, all these red lines are running parallel to one another, but you know they're they're not connected to one another unless they're on the same circuit. That's the same deal with these blue ones. These blue ones are all running parallel to one another, but they're not connected to one another unless they're on the same circuit. Red and blue can cross because they represent two different layers. Imagine you were building this in three dimensions, and the blue represented the bottom of the board, and the red represented the top of the board. You can have the blue and the red cross one another because they're actually not crossing. They're just passing over under one another in, in the z-axis. Um, but if you want to, you know, within the same layer, things cannot cross one another unless they are, um, unless they are intended to be connected to one another. So that's where, you know, stuff like this can actually make 
for some pretty interesting kind of like a puzzle. You gotta find out a way to lay everything down onto the board so everything's connected that needs to be connected, but nothing's crossing that should not be crossing. Uh, so nothing is connected that isn't supposed to be connected. And that in and of itself can pose a pretty interesting challenge. Um, but yeah, this is this is the other half of the uh, of the Eagle board design uh, software, and we'll be getting actually pretty familiar with both of them. Uh, I, I won't go necessarily in as much sort of detail as to uh, how to um, manipulate this because we will we will get very familiar with this uh, when we're when we're uh, constructing our first circuits. But I just wanted to make you guys aware that this is a thing that exists and it is um, definitely a uh, definitely a very powerful tool, just like just like the uh, the other side of it. Eagle Eagle software, in fact, in its in and of itself, is is a is quite a powerful tool. But we'll get we'll get very familiar with it. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> masterpiece. Um, I think I'll actually call it here uh, because we don't have necessarily material yet in order to get started on our own thing. I want to I want to save that for Wednesday. Um, we'll start using Eagle, uh, getting familiar with it, uh, building our own circuit in both the schematic and the uh, the board view, and um, sort of getting comfortable with all the different uh, features and design methods and everything like that. So as it stands right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the poll questions. Um, I imagine today probably wasn't terribly exciting, so I'm prepared for that. Uh, and then we will go ahead and leave it open for question and answer time and then uh, break for the next couple of days. So let's go ahead and get that started now. I'll go ahead and throw first poll question your way. <laughs> 